So in our previous presentation, we discovered this glitch that um, our obstacles are spawning. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. The only problem is that is we're accumulating a ton of objects inside of our scene. Now these objects are pretty simple, and so you know we can get to many of these objects before it'll start to affect performance. But it'll it'll be a good practice just to get rid of these objects when they get off stage. And so what we can do is we can determine a location that we think is appropriate to destroy the object. And, and what I'll do is I'm just gonna create um, a separate object. And this is just something that I can use uh, to determine whether or not I can see this object through the camera. So when I hit play, I don't see that cube over here that I've dragged off to the side. Now I don't know how far it is, but I know that this X position, because I move this object over, and actually I should zero out the Z just to make sure, um, but the X position, it looks like at about negative 10, I'll just round that up a little bit. It looks like if the obstacles get as far as that cube, we can safely destroy them and, and we won't see the result on screen. Now, I'll probably destroy the objects maybe a little bit earlier so we can actually see it in, in the preview. O otherwise, I'll split my viewport so we can look at the scene view and the game view at the same time. Um, but it looks like negative 10 along the X. Remember, we're moving it this way. That axis is the X axis. I can see it up here in the widget. And what we can do is we can further look at um, variables in order to store current positions of objects. And so we already have our objects uh, being spawned by the spawner, right? This thing is doing its thing. Now, if you remember, if we go back to our obstacle, so I'm going into my prefabs folder, I'm selecting my obstacle, and I can see over here that now I'm dealing with the prefab. Now the prefab was, um, had a state machine on it that simply said move, we did a translate, negative x, negative two on the x, and we did that per second every frame. And that resulted in this object, once it spawns, it moves along the x. And so what we can do is we can layer a few more actions on top of the state to determine whether or not it's appropriate to destroy this object. And, and um, it's, easier than it sounds, um, but we do need to use a variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into variables and uh, what I'll do <clears throat> is I wanna make sure it's a float and the float is gonna be the X position. In other words, we wanna know what the X position of this moving object is. Okay, and we'll store that in a float called X position. I'll go back to the state. What I want to do is I want to go into the transform submenu. And what I can do is a get position. Okay, and what the get position does, I'll just double click. The get position checks to see what position any of these values are. Okay, and what I want to do is find that X value and I'll store the current position in that X position variable. So, when this action is fired, it looks at the owner, right? Which is the obstacle and says, hey, what's your X position? Now, it only does that one time by default, but if I check every frame, there we go. And we wanna make sure we're using the world space. Um, every frame that this object is redrawn, so every time it moves and moves a little bit, it's going to say, hey, what's your X position? And when it gets the X position, it's going to store it in this X position variable, okay? So with this selected, I think we should be able to, I have mine set to debug and I'll hit play. Now, actually we probably won't see that value change because let me see if I can select, let me pause this. I wanna see if I can select one of those spawns so that we can watch its X position change. So I'm just peeling off my gameplay window so I can see my scene view. So I'll hit play and we're spawning. I'm gonna to try to select that, there we go. So we can actually see the X position updating. Now remember, it's moving into the negative, so this number gets smaller and smaller. We determined that at, at negative 10, this object is off screen. So what we'll do is we'll destroy that object when it gets to x equals negative 10. So I'm gonna go back into my prefab object, and so I have my, my translate, which is moving. I have this command that says get position, and all that does is it gets whatever position we wanna pay attention to, in this case, we told it to pay attention to X and store that into a float variable that we created, okay? 
And the next thing that I'll do is I want to do a little bit of a math logic on this thing. I'll do some math and let's see. Actually, it's not math. Where is that? I think it's under logic. Logic. I'm looking for a compare float or something to do with float. I don't remember. I'm just going to type in float and see what kind of options I have. And I'm, I want to compare two values. So I'm looking through here. There it is. Float compare. It was in logic. Okay. I'm looking for a float compare. And what this will do, <clears throat> I'll just double click. Now I have that float compare added. What it does is it takes two numbers and I could either type in numbers here, but that won't do us any good. Or I can look at variables. Uh, and what this will do is it'll take one value and compare it to the next value. And based on if it's equal to less than or greater than, we can set it up to do perform different actions. And what I want to do is I want to, I'll set float one. I don't want to set it to a hard value. I'll click on this little toggle button here. So float one will be whatever the current X position is. Float two is the point at which we want to destroy it. So uh, we know that negative 10 so in other words, we want to check the X position. And if it's equal or less than 10, we want to do something to it. And so we can fire off whatever action is listed in here. So I know that I want to fire off an action. So I'll go to events and I'll create a new action. And uh, I'll just call this destroy object as an event. If I go over to that state that says moving, I'll put the destroy object event and I'll create a new state. And on this state, this is where we're gonna destroy the object. Okay, so I'll just go up here and clear out my search. I'm looking for game object, destroy self. I could you know, destroy another object, but it's the parent object of this uh, uh, state machine that I wanna destroy. So it's saying destroy self. If I wanted to, I could detach any children, but I don't wanna do that. There's, there's no children in this situation. So let's look at this logic again. So it's moving, so it's translating negative two every, you know, in real time. Uh, it's constantly getting its X position and storing it in a value. It's then going to compare that X position and when it's negative 10, we're comparing it against negative 10. When it's equal to, we can destroy the object. Now it might, for some reason, you know, not, there's such a narrow threshold for it actually equaling zero. Um, we could actually just leave equal blank. And if it, once it gets less than negative 10, okay, so if it's negative 11, negative 10.1, negative 10.3, when it's less than whatever that value is, we want to execute this event, which is destroy object. Well, when it goes to destroy object, we want to send it over to state one. State one contains the destroy self. So I'll rename state something that makes sense, destroy me. There we go. So again, that logic is it's, the translate is moving that object that we spawned. It's constantly checking its X position against, uh, it's constantly checking its X position and storing it in a ver uh, va variable. I'll get it out, there it is. It's comparing the variable against negative 10. We just typed in that value because that's what we determined the point at which we can safely destroy this object and have it not be on camera. Once it's less than negative 10, it's going to, when it's less than, we're going to execute the destroy object state and it sends it over to the state that destroys the object. Okay, now we could measure this number and do different things based on if that value is equal to or greater than. Um, we do need to do this every frame though. I did forget to check that because right now it would just check it the first frame. In fact, let me hit play. <clears throat> and we'll see that as these objects spawn, so they're spawning randomly, this is not going to work because the only time it checks to see if the X position is less than 10 is during that first instance of its frame. So it's, they're not disappearing. Let me toggle that play button off. And that's because I forgot to check that every frame. Okay, so we wanna compare that every single frame. Now when I hit the play button and I run this through, the minute that this X position is less than 10, and in fact, I'll select it, and we can watch it up here. The minute that's less than 10, that object should disappear. There it goes. So every time they, they get about here, they're all gonna start to destroy. So it, it keeps our, our, our 
our hierarchy nice and clean. We're not keeping track of any objects that we don't need to refer to anymore. This is all the same object. It just has a state machine on it that is gen generating its random, uh, it's generating its movement, it's keeping track of itself. The state machine is actually generating the random object, if, or random position, excuse me, if you remember, is the object spawner. That's what is moving this thing around. So that's the basic element. You can't do this without variables. Uh, these are dynamic numbers, okay? And uh, we'll continue to push this forward. Now, this is something that we want to avoid. This is an obstacle. We don't want to touch it. So in the next presentation, we'll start to look at, we'll test to see if our player touches one of these objects. We'll do a collision detection. And if it does find a collision detection, we'll determine what should happen. So we'll establish the, uh, a health value. And every time we touch this, we'll reduce our health. Now, we'll take these same principles and then apply them to things that are positive. And so at this point, this is when you really want to start to think about the gameplay. So based on this, I can repurpose my my obstacles to become something like coins that have a positive value so that when I collect them, I earn points. In addition to that, maybe I set up some kind of system to where not only am I collecting, you know, uh, um, coins, but I'm collecting these little uh, health kits that rejuvenate me, add health back into the equation so that if I get to zero, I don't die. Uh, and then maybe I'm also collecting other elements that could ultimately build up and give me additional functionality, more power, the ability to move left and right. Um, some of those things we'll start to approach uh, in the next phase of this project. We'll catch up in the next presentation.